Hello, welcome back to ITC Sport. All right, I know that this comment section below is going to look like an utter home-cooked casserole of chaos. I just know it's going to be littered with football fans scattered across Europe whining like a cattle of hungry geese. Apparently, one of the worst things you can do as a human being is to go on the internet and declare a popular footballer overrated. But honestly, I remember once declaring Dea Upkamano was overrated, and you'd swear I just drowned with Mother Teresa in a toilet bowl. Well, don't worry, lads, I won't repeat that mistake this time out, largely because Dea Okabamano has been left at home on the couch, weeping into handfuls of soggy popcorn, and probably stabbing himself in the thigh to make sure he can still feel pain. So let's take a look at every Euro 2020 team's most overrated player in their squad. Oh, bring on the chaos. Right, let's go. Italy, Gianluigi Donnarumma. I am sick to the teeth of the Gianluigi Donnarumma hype. Ever since he became the second youngest goalkeeper in the history of Serie A at a ridiculous 16 years of age, back in 2015, we've been told this guy is Gianluigi Buffon's heir. Well, he's, he's 22 now, and what exactly has he done? Yes, 250 appearances for an historic club like AC Milan. It sounds great, but they've mostly been a mid-table team with him in goal. The fans hate him. He's going to join PSG next month. But considering Kilo Navas is a better keeper, then Buffon's heir is about to spend the season rotting on a Parisian bench. I'm not calling him a fraud or the Italian Joe Hart, but we were expecting the second coming of Buffon. Buffon is the football what the godfather is to fill. Donnarumma by comparison, Big Mama's House 2, Switzerland, Brie Lambolo. Okay, maybe the hype has dried up a little bit. But five years ago, Brie Lambolo was a 19-year-old wonder kid who was Mo Salah's replacement of Basel and was being linked with both Man United and Arsenal. Listen, yes, he's got a lightning quick pace, but his end product would make you want to pull out chunks of your own teeth. Just five goals last season for Russia Munchen Gladbach. At 24 years of age, I think we're now beginning to realize that Lambolo is a big fuss about nothing. Turkey Ozan Gabak. I've said this a thousand times. And what stratosphere is the hype for Ozan Gabak justified? Some people speak about him as if he's a Turkish demigod defensive rock. No, no, are we forgetting that his switch from Stuttgart to Schalke coincided in the most embarrassing era in the history of the club? Last season, he was mostly stuffed to the foot of the Bundesliga. Then he picked up a five-game ban for spitting. Anyway, Schalke recently demanded 18 million pounds for him. It says a lot about his defensive mediocrity that Jurgen Klopp would rather pay double the fee for Ibrahim Kanate, sending Kabak back to Germany to rot in a relegated dressing room that he deserted in their hour of need. Paying 18 million pounds for Ozan Kabak, you'd rather puncture your lung with a toothbrush. Wales high Wilson. Oh my god, Wilson's the next David Beckham! Club, get him in the first team quick! Yeah. Pretty much that. Go back to that Derby County team under Frank Lampard, and I guarantee you most Premier League watchers would have told you that it was Harry Wilson, not Mason Mount, who was the true young superstar in that team, all because he's able to take a half decent set piece. Lads, Liverpool fans are practically begging Jurgen Klopp to stuff him into their team. Listen, he was given his Premier League chance at Bournemouth on loan, and started well, then lost his place and got relegated, and now has just spent a season finishing mid-table in the Championship under Mick McCarthy with Cardiff City. I know he's currently been linked with a £17 million move to Leeds, but trust me, the man turns 25 next season. He's halfway to 50. I know he's the youngest player to ever represent Wales back in 2013. I know Liverpool fans were trying to convince themselves he was their version of Ryan Giggs, but trust me, this guy is championship standard. Belgium, Toby Alderweireld. Don't get me wrong, on his day, Toby Alderweireld was a top class centre half for both club and country, but that day has come and gone, and yet nobody seems to notice. I'm not sure why. We all saw last season that Tottenham were just utter scrambled pig muck in defence, but nobody ever seemed to try and blame Alderweireld. Oh no, it wasn't his fault. It's just Eric Dyer. Oh, let's have him burn to the stake. I'm convinced Toby could have spent the entire 90 minutes doing nothing other than fleeing bags of his own stool at Hugo Lloris' face. And Spurs fans will still be making excuses for this guy. I'm sorry, lads, but the other viral defensive rock that Jose Mourinho desperately wanted to bring to Old Trafford, that version is buried at sea. In his place is a slow, past it, and clumsy 32-year-old shadow of a man who honestly is probably going to get utterly ripped to wet confetti this month. Denmark, Kasper Dolberg. Yeah, there we have Kasper Dolberg. Five years ago, this guy was an utter Ajax Hot shot and rightly so. He just been scouted by the same guy who discovered Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and he arrives at Ajax to smash home 23 goals in his debut season at just 17 years of age. Honestly, this was a child being coached by Dennis Bergkamp and was seen as one of the most exciting young strikers on planet Earth. And he's now 23 and just feebly scored six times for a Nice team halfway down League One. This guy's been so anonymous on the pitch, you'd almost rather pick Casper the friendly ghost. Finland team with Pookie. I'll shoulder the blame for this one. I was the one who overrated Team Pookie, not you.
It was me! And anyone who saw him explode like an elderly person's bowels during the first half of the 1920 season with Norwich, they'll probably tell you the same. After 30 goals in the championship, here he was recording six goals and two assists in his first five Premier League games. Auntie, his finishing looked razor sharp. He was being linked with Man United. I genuinely thought we were looking at a mid-table goal machine, maybe to the level of Denver Bad at Newcastle. Who knows, maybe he could get himself a move to Chelsea. And then here comes the goal drought. To make me look like I've got wet penny flu for brains, this guy is championship standard. Russia, Denis Cheryshev. Does anyone still rate Denis Cheryshev? After the 2018 World Cup, the Russian winger was making Real Madrid fans wonder if they were stupid to let him go, and suddenly his agent is all the top European clubs eating out of the palm of his hand. Well, three years later, he's a 30-year-old injury-prone wet salad on the bench of Valencia. I guess he wasn't that good after all. He very quickly falls into the level of Alan Jagwev levels of Russian overation. Austria, Marcel Sabitzer. This is a controversial one, but I think Marcel Sabitzer is slightly overrated. Listen, his 1920 season with RB Leipzig was spectacular. 16 goals from midfield, reached a Champions League quarter final and was given a 50 million euro release clause. But he's had a performance drop off. He's 27. He's now available for just 15 million pounds. No, he's not this world class midfield engine. He's he's just a good Austrian midfielder who's been at Leipzig so long that his urine is now probably made up of at least 75% Red Bull. Probably probably smells like frosted shredded wheat, to be honest. Netherlands, Luke de Jong. I'm not sure if Luke de Jong is really that overrated anymore, but I'm pretty sure there are some lazy neutrals out there who assume he's good after scoring the winner against Manchester United in the Europa League for Sevilla two seasons ago, and then two goals in the final against Inter Milan. Factor in the fact he's been around the Dutch international squad for 10 years, that he rebuilt his reputation after his flop loan spell with Newcastle with 112 goals in five seasons for PSV. But no, yes, he's an Eredivisie goal machine, yes. But he scored four league goals for Sevilla last season. Honestly, in any top League. He's about as dangerous as chewed up toast. North Macedonia, Boba Nikolov. Next, Ukraine, Roman Yeramchuk. I, I already know. There are legions of football hipsters out there tucking into their lunchtime bowls of chicken alfredo pasta and telling their cat that Roman Yeramchuk is the one to watch this summer. No, the real one to watch is the ice cream driver who stares at your kids. No, no, don't you know he's the one that scored 23 goals a season for Ghent? Yeah, I do. It's... It's the Belgian League. Maybe he might turn out to be the next Jonathan David and become a 13 goal a season striker in France. But please, hipsters worldwide, stop putting your money on him to win the golden boot. You might as well throw your wallet off a bridge. Croatia, Nikola Vlasic. I hope for Marco Silva's own sake that he has not been keeping tab on Nikola Vlasic's career because he might actually just chuck himself into a nursing home. Don't forget, he binned the Croatian playmaker while at Goodison Park. And now the 23 year old just contributed 12 goals and six assists for CSK in Moscow. Football hipsters across the globe are now acting as if every Everyone's treatment of him was as careless as leaving your toddler in a crash run by homeless alcoholics. Yeah, listen, it's a good goal scoring return in Russia, yes. But now Everton are linked with a 30 million pound bid for a guy they treated like a stale cheese sandwich. Look, he's a decent player, but calm down. Trust me, this guy is not the next Luka Modric. I'm predicting some pretty anonymous Vlasic displays this month. Czech Republic, Thomas Callas. Okay, maybe not anymore, but Thomas Callas used to be overrated. Back when he kept a clean sheet at Anfield in his debut for that Chelsea team on the day of the Stevie G slip, he was being hailed as a young Czech John Terry. Now. Um, he's 28 and playing in a Bristol City defence with Alfie Mawson and Danny Simpson, so, um... No. England, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I am prepared to die on this hill. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is overrated. Don't get me wrong, he's done very well the last two seasons. The guy scored 21 last season and 15 the season before for an awkward lump. That is absolutely fantastic, but time will tell. Yes, he's a hard-working striker who gets stuck in, but he's only scored three goals since the first week of February. He also went on a seven-game goal drought over Christmas and New Year. To me, he lacks consistency, and here's my prediction. Give it two years, Everton will have upgraded, and he'll have signed for a newly promoted team like Stoke. I mean, let me put it this way, he's not even half the player Peter Crouch was. Says it all. Scotland Ryan Fraser. Ryan Fraser is a man who's had one brilliant season in his career. I think the world has now woken up and realised what Fraser actually is. Just a bang average mid-table winger with delusions of grandeur. A bit like when Charles and Zogbia assumed he'd have half the Champions League queuing up to sign him, only to wind up at Wigan. Wouldn't be surprised if he's now serving popcorn down the cinema. Poland, Gregor Krakowiak. One of the most overrated midfielders on planet Earth. Honestly, how this guy was ever a Europa League winning midfield linchpin under Unai Emery? I honestly have no earthly idea. Slovakia, Martin Dubravka. Listen, I like Martin Dubravka. He's a top class reliable goalkeeper, but lads. Newcastle fans have a tendency to overrate their shot stoppers. Screw Christ, some of them still think Karl Dallas should be in the England squad. I mean, good Christ. Dubravka is good, but some Jordies think he's the best in the league. He's a quality goalie, but let's not forget, he, he was being kept 
kept out of the Newcastle team by an average lump of hair gel and Carl Darlow. He's made high profile mistakes, he's good. But links to PSG, utter wet nonsense. He's no better than Tim Kroll. Spain, Adama Traore. Listen, Adama Traore has done well, but He's overrated. Yes, he has muscles bigger than a couch. He coats himself in baby oil and looks like a WWE wrestler. But I'm sorry, his end product is truly horrific. Seven Premier League goals for Wolves in over 100 games? Just two last season? What use is raw pace and muscle if you don't know how to score? Sweden, Pontus Janssen. Listen, I know Pontus Janssen has clawed his way into the Premier League with Brentford. So this is bad timing, but what at Leeds? Their fans spoke of this guy as if he was a defensive god. Shades of Rio Ferdinand, right? Well, do you not think it's a bit telling that as soon as you ditched him, that that was the year you went up. Jansen is a good championship defender, but next season, trust me, he's gonna be utterly ripped into wet, soggy weed of Bix. France, Marcus Thuram. Marcus Thuram has been dragged into the French squad purely based on the fact that Didier Deschamps is friends with his dad. Again, like Quebec, he's another spitter. And yes, I know he hit the headlines of two goals for Borussia Mönchengladbach against Real Madrid in the Champions League, but he scored eight goals in the Bundesliga last season. That is it. Don't you dare tell me that he's a better forward than Alexander Lacazette or Anthony Martial. Germany, Emre Can. Emre Can is a good midfielder, that's about it. I can't be the only one who remembers that when he arrived at Anfield for Bayer Leverkusen in 2014, Liverpool fans spoke about him as if they were signing a 20-year-old Michael Ballack. The fact he then chucked in four years of mediocrity at the club, one audacious bicycle kick aside, then he was able to command a move to Juventus. The fact Mauricio Sarri then left him out of his Champions League squad kind of shows you he's not all he was cracked up to be. He's a good, versatile player, but overhyped. Hungry Adam Bogda. Maybe not overrated, but whatever career guidance counselor advised Adam Bogdan to take up the sport of football, clearly they need a change of profession themselves. Good Christ, he's got the reflexes of a whoopee cushion. Portugal, Pedro Goncalves. Uh, listen, I might be wrong, maybe Pedro Goncalves is the next Portuguese superstar, but everyone seems to automatically assume this guy is the next Bruno Fernandes. Yes, 23 goals for Sporting Lisbon, it sounds impressive, but remind me, how many players have lit up the Portuguese leagues only to utterly melt in one of the top leagues? This guy already is an ignored Wolverhampton Wanderers flop who couldn't even make his way past Ben Marshall. Maybe he will be a world star, but calling him the next Bruno is a bit premature. Anyway, that's it for us. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Who are the most overrated players of yours? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.